Lofi. And first, I would like to show gratitude and thank you for accepting this invitation. That's fine. Alhamdulillah. No. May Allah accept it from us. May Allah put it on our scale on the day of Qiyam, inshallah. Amin, amin. Mashallah. Um, yeah. As today, inshallah, we'll be talking about, although you know the topic better than I do, so. Um, and I say uh, topic today because of um, the current issues we are facing with regards to role models, the kind of role models the youth are picking up today. So it's very important we discuss this issue. So without wasting much time, inshallah, I will give you the platform so that you share with us what you have for us, inshallah. All right, inshallah. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqaw qawli. First of all, um, we start by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the opportunity to be here today to have this discussion. Um, I'm, I'm double streaming, so you should forgive me if I tend to be gazing at another uh, screen. I'm streaming on Facebook as well. And so you would see times when I'll be gazing here and then I'll be gazing here. And so, yeah. And then maybe I have to just give a caveat to those on Facebook um, that unfortunately they can't see my host. And so, um, when probably we get to the Q&A session and you ask a question, I'll probably have to repeat the question and then answer it for them to be able to follow us, well, inshallah. But um, inshallah. we start by thanking the last one, not Allah, for the opportunity to be here this afternoon to discuss this topic. Um, and then I think for all of us, there is just that need. At some point, we all need some form of motivation in the form of individuals that we can look up to to become better. Sometimes it's just, it's just easier when you are looking at somebody who is living a life that you want to live and then like pick up learnings from the person just so you become better so it's my hope and prayer that um, this benefits all of us and then we are praying that inshallah in the end Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our intention and then grant us the reward for the effort we are making this afternoon um, and so the topic is the Muslim youth and role modeling I try as much as possible not to, not to extend the um, session for it to be too long so that we can finish within time inshallah um, the topic is Muslim youth and role modeling. I think, um, first of all, there are three terms that we have to define, right? We have to define the term Muslim, we have to define the term role model, and then we have to define the term um, mentor, right? Because sometimes there, is, there seems to be, uh, uh, should I say, a, a cross between the word, the word mentor and then the word role model. So um, Muslim is basically somebody who submits completely to the will of Allah. When you call yourself Muslim, it means when Allah dictates something, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that Allah says this, and you make the effort to follow it. Right? And then, um, a mentor is an experienced and trusted advisor. Right? So, when I say I'm mentoring somebody, or when I say somebody is my mentor, what that means is that the person has experience either in a space or within a, a particular area, and then I feel like, the more I interact with the person, the more I get guidance, the more I get advice, the more I get to know what I'll follow, right? But then when I call someone my role model, what it means is that I'm looking up to the person and then I'm trying to live the life that the person is living. So there is that difference. Somebody can be my mentor, but the person wouldn't be my role model. But then for a, for a person who is your role model, it means that aside listening to the person, you're actually looking at the person and what they are doing and then following up they are, and then picking up learnings from their life and then try as much as possible to apply it into your life. All right, so that is where you get the difference between a mentor and then a role model. A mentor is just somebody who advises me. A role model is somebody that I, I, I look up to and then I follow in their footsteps as well. Um, now, we are Muslims today. All right, alhamdulillah, we are Muslim. And then um, we are Muslims today. And then um, we have, um, sorry, I just got a feedback that I can't be seen. So um, let me try and see if. Um, I'll see you after okay, I don't know if it's any better now, but I hope, inshallah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite visible now. Alhamdulillah. Um, no, we can, we, the most important thing is to hear the information. We can hear the information, mashallah. Okay, sure, 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 sure. So, um, as Muslims, um, we know when you ask any Muslim that who is your role model today, it seems to be like a default answer that we would all say Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
I mean, um, to be fair, that is what we have to say, all right, and then that is what we have to live up to as Muslims. But then we then come back to our reality as to whether we are actually living in that we are living that reality, okay? Um, I would just like to start by actually emphasizing that actually the role model that every Muslim has to follow is Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is the individual that every single Muslim has to follow as a role model. And then um, this is based on the Quran and then we have also a hadith that are backing the fact, all right? Um, when you go to where the person, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was stamping the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he described the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as somebody who has khuluq al-azim, right? Somebody whose character is like the best. When you pick every character, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is there, right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. So, so that portion was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirming to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and confirming to us in the Quran that the best character is in Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then when you go further in the Quran, you get you get to see where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us as believers that So basically what we learn from there is that for us as Muslims, the best as examples that we have to take as role model is Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that is like the standard for us as Muslims. Whatever anytime you need an inspiration to live a better life to in, in religiously, socially, in terms of every facet of your life, just go back to the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then you get the best of examples that you need. Alright? And then um, we also remember the hadith where um, Qatada came to Aisha and then asked her, they asked her what the life of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was like. And then she said that the life of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the Quran. So this also comes back to confirm to us that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam actually modeled his life according to the Quran. And so for us as Muslims who live, who, who follow the Quran and then the Sunnah of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we should know that whatever we are picking from Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we are picking it based on inspiration from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? And I explained earlier that the definition for Muslim is somebody who is submissive completely to the will of Allah. And so. We follow the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be able to live that reality for most of us. That's, that's like the reality that we can live into. Now, um, let's come to us. Let's come to us today, all right? You know, sometimes when you, when you talk to somebody, when you ask somebody who is your role model, by default, the person says Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but then you realize that when you look at our dealings and our activities, we don't seem to actually live that reality. All right, and then there seems to be that this notion that we've created that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lived in a very long era, and so um, it's like when you are speaking about Rasul, it's so virtual, like I can't connect, you know, because it is so abstract. Rasul is not here today, and then some people even go as far as even claiming that he's not living a reality, and so because of that, it's like what you are telling me doesn't really click. But then what you have to do as Muslims is to like what i'm trying to do today is to kind of like give us a sense of appreciation of the timeless state of the life that rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam lived and that helps us to also be like rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam in every aspect of our lives right now rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam actually himself confirmed that the best of the, the best of generations are his, his sahaba then those who come after them that the tabi'in and then those who come after them tabi'in tabi'in and then uh, you'd realize that this generation is actually the generation that scholars of ahadith and then scholars of fiqh actually like took a lot of learning from. So most of the, um, the Islamic literature that we have today, most of them were built within that era. And um, actually some Muslim scholars have turned the, the golden era. That is where you have the purest form of Islam that was being practiced, right? So, I mean, there is that, there is that need for us to have that understanding, right? Um, when you come down to our reality today, right, I will tell you that my role model is Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But then today I'm reading um, a lot of books on personal development, I'm reading books of mental health, I'm reading books on, you know, uh, Pan-Africanism, I'm reading books of hum um, on human rights, I'm reading books on, I mean like, I'm reading a host of books, right, but then I am not reading the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I am not, I'm, I'm not reading the biography of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I am not reading the life of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Meanwhile, 
me as an individual, I am claiming that my role model is Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, now just so I am not mistaken, that is not to say that reading these books are not good. I mean, we all read it. I read it personally for my own personal development. But then I think that we should just have that underlying um, understanding that links whatever we are reading to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, now um, today we have. I, I would I would like to base this um, this conversation around topical issues that we are facing today. So, for example, a lot of men tend to like reggae, all right? A lot of men tend to like reggae. And then you may, you know, peep, I hear a lot of, when we are in the circle of guys, you hear them making reference to Bob Marley and how wise his words are and the level of wisdom that he has. And you know, you know how, how people can really hype Bob Marley and the kind of wisdom that he brought and how he was speaking to how we can save ourselves from the, from the slavery of the white and all of those things. Now, I mean, those are very good. All right. I mean, that notwithstanding, I mean, people people have reasons why they follow those. But then you come to realize that all those things that Bob Mali is saying today, all right, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said it and said it in the best of forms, right? Now the link that we don't have is because we because we sought to get that benefit from Bob Mali, right? We're falling into the harm of actually like now consuming his music and then you know that in Islam music is haram. So there is that conflict. We started off by seeking a benefit and then by wanting to assume the benefits and live it in our life, we end up consuming content that is haram for us. Right? Now, um, second point. You know, today our, our women are crazy about feminism. Every woman who is coming up is like feminism and you know, it's like women and they are right and all of those things and then you know when, when any woman, when anybody comes up and writes any quotes that is pushing women forward, we go crazy and women are sharing all over and we are hyping and all of those things. But then, I mean, come back to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a hadith that th those amongst Muslims who have the complete of faith whose faith is complete are those who are best in their character and those and the best amongst you are those who are best to their women right so this is Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam essentially highlighting the importance of women and how they should be treated in Islam right and then Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam also says in another hadith that the best of you are those who are best to their women and I am the best of you Right, so this is Rasulullah Ali was actually telling you that you should actually like prioritize your women, right? And I am a living testimony, and I am the best of examples that you can look at when you are looking at being the best to your women, right? Now, I think the question I'm trying to ask myself is, why do I read the same statement of Rasulullah Ali was but it doesn't give me shivers. It doesn't give me spines. It doesn't. It doesn't make me want to live like Rasulullah It doesn't push me to want to. Um, it. It doesn't push me to want to. How? What's the word I'll use? To want to read about Rasulullah Wasallam. Okay. But then I'll read the same thing from another author, who is not a Muslim, and then it's I moved. I go and buy the books they've written. I'm reading their books. I'm. Like, I, I am following, I'm literally following the lifestyle. I want to live the lifestyle that they are living, right? I mean, these people are doing very well, mashallah, alhamdulillah. But then you would realize that if, you, if, if, if we really had a connection with the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu anything that we read from these people, we can get a dotted line to what Rasulullah sallallahu did. All right? Now, when you read um, books on books on um how like i mean habits of successful successful people and how to become successful in life and all of those things one of the key things that i've seen most of the people mention is that you should make there are people who make the best of use of their of, of their early morning times right so these are people who tell you they wake up at 4 a.m and then dedicate their time to reading and you know they do all of those things and so before they set out to go and start their day they have benefited themselves in the earliest of their of, of, of their times okay so they woke up earlier than every other person would wake up all right and so because of that they they they, they, they see the benefits right now i read this book and then mashallah i go on to listen to talks from the from the author of the book i go and read about their life i go and look at the successes they are making 
But then wait. Let's come back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay? Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam actually made a dua to Allah that, Oh Allah, bless my ummah in their early times. Alright? And then when you go back, to, when Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was going to dispatch um, like an army to go out, he does it early in the morning. And then it was part of the Sahaba that when they were going to send their goose off into trade, they do it in the earliest part of the day. Alright? And then when you read from Muslim scholars, you get to realize how um, there is a lot of benefit in the earliest part of the day. Now, I mean, when you come to the Sunnah of Rasulullah you, you just get to see that there is that host of information we have. All right. And then we, we've not been able to create a connection with it. Okay. And then another person who is not the standard that we have to live right has been able to somehow come into contact with it and then the person is benefiting from it today and then it's like we are seeing the person to be like a genius meanwhile the real genius is in rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us these things 1401 years ago i mean these were like several years ago but then people discover these same things today and then we are celebrating them and seeing them as the geniuses and then it's like we are living like them we are following up to them and so it so happens that when we get to times when these people say things that are not islamic we are conflicted because we've lived so much in their shadow and their understanding and their way of doing things that the moment they say something that is not islamic we are conflicted now we don't know if we should pick what Islam is saying or we should pick them because we see them to be wise. We see them, we see them to, be, to be talented. We see them to be very intelligent people. All right? But at the end of the day, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the best of example, as I indicated earlier in the conversation. Right? I, am, I am an individual who, one of the people that I really admire in the space of business is um, Steve Jobs. Personally, um, I love him. And then I, I, like, I like listening to all the speeches that he's giving. I like, um, I, I, because anytime he speaks, I see a lot of wisdom in it, right? But then this is something I realized. Today, Steve Jobs is dead, okay? But we are still mentioning him. We are discussing him. iPhones are like every, what everybody wants. Everybody loves iPhone. It's like he's left a legacy behind that we know is, he's going to be celebrated for, for as long as the world will live. That is if Allah will so, all right? Now, there's a speech by Steve Jobs. It's on YouTube. It's called Connecting the Dots. Okay, where he shares um, his life story about how he did and then he became successful. And then when he got to the part where he spoke about where he dropped out from school and then he started taking other classes that are not really in line with what he signed up to do, he came across a quote. And then the quote says that if you live your life like you are going to, if you live your life like you are going to die, one day you'll be, you'll be, you'll be right. I've forgotten, I, I, I'm trying to remember the it says, if you live your life, if you live every day as if it was your last, one day you'll be right. Yes, I've gotten it. That if you live your life as if every day was your last, one day you'll be right. Meaning that if I wake up today and then I'm assuming that today was my last day, a day will come where I'll be right. And then this is what Steve Jobs said. That statement is the statement that he kept with him. Such that every single day he's living his life, he knows he can, and so that's like the motive. That 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 is what got him to ask himself: if he dies, what he what would he want to be remembered for? All right, and so that is what pushed him to bring up the idea of Apple and what we have today. And actually, today we are celebrating him for it. All right, now that is something Steve Jobs said, and then it will sound genius. All right, and then when I when I read something like this, I'm motivated. Mashallah, I'm moved. I want to now start reflecting. But then Subhanallah. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us that we should remember the stupor of fun. We should remember that thing that cuts off the joy that we have in the dunya, right? And that is death. And then as we are, Mus as Muslims as we are, we know that any point in time today, we could die, all right? And even as I am sitting here speaking to you today, that could be the point where I die, all right? And then um, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us that when a person dies, right, three, all of his deeds are cut except three, right? The first one is Sadaqa Tijariya. That is something that you leave behind that you benefit from. The second is some knowledge that you source that people are benefiting from. And then the third one is um, 
the third one is you leaving behind a righteous offspring that will pray for you. All right. So it means that from the words of Rasulullah alayhi wa sallam, I should be able to get the motivation to want to do something and leave a legacy behind that I will benefit from even after my death. Right. But then because we've created Rasul as an, an unnatural kind of um, status or an unnatural kind of being to connect with, we tend to think that what Rasul is saying is a cake and then it's not, it's not achievable. And so we take these people and then we put them at the status of role models. Right? So it's like, sometimes I, I tend to um, feel like we have to make the... Con it's, it's because we don't really um, have the Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at heart. Like, we haven't created that connection with Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so anytime we read the Ahadith, they seem to us to be um, supernatural things. They seem to us to be um, things that we can't see ourselves living. But then these are people who are not Muslims, who have found ways to live these same lives. And then we are celebrating them for it. And we are inviting them to platforms. We are, we are, giving, them, um, we are giving them the attention that we don't have to give them. Simply because we've not found us, we've not been able to give ourselves that motivation to, to, to live that reality in Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alright, so that will be with the, with the essence of example. Now let's come to um, we as individuals today. So now we as individuals want to become role models for the youth to follow. And I think that will be like the crux of the conversation that we are having today. So we as individuals want to become the role models that we want the youth to follow. Alright. And so, uh, so we have we as individuals want to become new models that the youth will follow, right? Sorry, I lost the stream on um, Instagram, and so I'm trying to join in again. Uh, okay, I'm very sorry for my. Uh, people here, I lost the stream on Instagram and so I'm just trying to continue. I'm just trying to log in from there as well so that I'll continue over here. Kindly forgive me. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll, I think I'll continue whilst he gets back. So basically, what um, basically the point I'm making is that we have people who have found um, qualities and have adopted them, and then Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has already lived these qualities. What we should try as, to do as much as possible as individual is to always find the dots with these things in the life of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then we'll be okay. Now, um, let's come to us as individuals, right? As individuals, we want to become role models to the youth. And that is, so if you ask any um, young person who is coming up now, um, what they want to, as part of what they want to do, basically, you'll see a lot of us will give the answer, a, a lot of us will give the response that, we want to become we want to become role models to um, the young people. We want the young people to look up to us. We want the, we want the young people. We, we want to leave something behind that the young people could pick up and then be inspired on, right? But then this is what we are missing. If I mention your name today, what, what with with who you are now? If I mention your name, what is the thought that comes to the mind of the of, of the person who is listening to me? All right. Um, you see, it's like we have to understand that as Muslim as we are, it's very important that the identity that we have as Muslims lead whatever identity that we have. But unfortunately, we tend to give a lot of precedence to our. Uh, we tend to give a lot of precedence. Um, sorry, I'm trying to join again. Uh, Sorry, I'm connecting to Instagram again, and so I'm just trying to get connected. I have sent the request. I'm just trying to get connected so that I'll have the same conversation across body inshallah. I lost the stream on Instagram. Yeah, so I'm connecting now, alhamdulillah. Uh, okay, so I lost you on Instagram, sorry. Alhamdulillah, I'm back. Nah, Alhamdulillah, I'm back. So um, I was just about going into the point where I was talking about we as the young people who want to become as role models to the youth who are following us, all right? So you'd realize that 
when you ask a young person what you would want to um what what as part of the aspiration we have we all say that we want the young people to look up to us and want to become like us and all of those things but you see what we are selling to them is the worldly version of who we are becoming so for example i'm a doctor i'm an engineer i'm 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 a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a journalist um, you realize that all the identities that we are sharing with them are worldly and so there seems to be a disconnect between that and being Muslim, right? There are three, di there are three individuals that I want to mention. I want to mention three individuals. And then from your end, I want you to think of the, the first thought that comes. All right. So the first, the first that we have is, um, I'm going to mention Sheikh Asim Al-Hakim. I mean, I'm biased towards him, so I'll mention him. So I just want you to think. I just want you to think about what clicks into your mind first. So I have Asim Al Hakim, right, and then I have um, Ali Pantami in Nigeria, right, and then I have Mariam Lemu in Nigeria as well. So I've mentioned three individuals, and then I just want you to spend like the next five seconds thinking about the thought that comes to mind first, right, and then you realize that the underlying thought that comes to mind with all of them is that they are muslim right that's like the underlying thought that comes to your mind the underlying thought that comes to your mind is that they are muslim all right now um think of it this way um sheikh asim al-hakim you know that aside him being a sheikh he actually has a job and he's like the head of hr and um he's like the head of human resource for a company in in saudi that's like his eight to nine his nine to five job every day right and then um, Ali Pantami is the Minister of Communication for Nigeria, not like a department for the whole of Nigeria. And then Mariam Lemu is also the head administrator of a hostel in Mina in Nigeria, right? But then when I mention all these individuals, the first identity that came into mind for all of us is that they are Muslim, right? So I think the point I'm trying to put across is that in as much as you want to become a role model to the young and upcoming Muslim, the young and upcoming children who are coming up, what is the first identity that you are selling to them? Is it the identity as Muslim or the identity due to the work that you do or the certificate that you've attained in this dunya? Because you realize that for us as Muslim, it's not just okay that we we are like we are dunya focused. It's not enough. The end for us is the akhirah. And you see that when when the verse that I mentioned from Surah Al Ahzab. Where you talk about like no, the verse that I mentioned about like right. So at the end of the day, for us as Muslims, there is always a connection to the hereafter. There is always, always a connection to the hereafter. So it's not enough that I'm saying that I'm a doctor, I'm saying I'm an engineer, I'm saying that I'm I'm, I'm a journalist, and so I'm carrying myself about as the ideal person to be a role model to the upcoming Muslim, right? Or that is okay to have but then when that young can that young muslim look at me and then say that okay aside becoming a doctor i want to become the an ustaz in my local masjid that is what we don't have basically right so some of us are thinking that the work the work of teaching in the islamic school is, is left for um like people who go to umul Qura university to learn sharia and all of those things but at the end of the day, we have a lot more impact if we learn the deen and teach it with what we are. All right. Today, when you go to like today, the young, the young people in our community don't like to go to madrasa because they feel like um, uh, madrasa is backwards. You don't get anything from it. Parents are sacrificing madrasa for their children to go for vacation classes. All right. Imagine you, the individual who is an engineer, right? And then aside being the engineer, you know Quran, you know Hadith, you know Sirah. And so on Saturday and Sunday, you are in the madrasa teaching the kid. All right. What do you think the kid is, is, is learning? He's learning that I get to go to madrasa and pick up all these things. And then I still get to have a life. All right. So these, these, these are like kind of like um, um, identities that I want us to push forward. And I think right now the commonest for us to all relate to is um, Ali Pantami of Nigeria, who is the Minister of Communication. And look at in this Ramadan, he's still on, the, he's still on his, his podium doing tafsir. I mean, what is nicer than this? This is somebody who has excelled in the dunya and then he has the deen also intact. 
All right. You have your uh, sister Maria Lemu who is moving from country from country, delivering lectures. The lectures. Meanwhile, this is somebody who has a day job that she's running. All right. So it, it, it's it's we shouldn't make it like an either or. For a Muslim, it's like we have the best of the two worlds, so we have to really benefit from it, right? It's just like we trying to live the life where Allah is telling us that we shouldn't forget our portion of the dunya. And taking our portion of the dunya means that we strive to get the benefits of the dunya whilst we also try to get the, the hereafter. So I think the challenge I'm throwing to all of us is that when I stand out there and say I want to be a, a, a role model to the young Muslim, which identity am I selling them? Am I selling them the Muslim identity first and then what I do? Or I'm selling to them what I do first before I become a Muslim. Because what I sell to them first and what they see from me first prints in their mind the kind of people they want to become. So we really have to make it a big point of, uh, of, of um, attaining Islamic education, right? So now I'll come to the last point of, my, of, of, of the message I'm putting across, which is the challenge that I'm throwing to the two sets of people that we have in our community. So now you see that we have those of us who have prioritized secular education. And so we have all the degrees, we have PhDs, we have MSCs, right? We have our masters, we have our first degree, we have the PhD, but then we have nothing to show of the dean. And then we have those individuals who have also made, um, who also study just Islamic um, 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 studies, so to say. And so now they come back into the community and then you'd realize that if they don't get the chance to sit, to teach or work in Islamic institutions, they are stuck. And so it's very difficult for a parent to call them out as a role model for their kid who is growing up. All right. So I have two legs of challenge. The first challenge is for the, those of us who have, who, have, who, are, who have achieved it in terms of the secular education that we have. Right. It's good that you have your first degree. It's good that you have your master's. It's good that you have your PhD. But then take up the challenge of knowing Islam, at least to the basic of levels, such that when you have to communicate to the Muslim, you know what you are talking about. You can become a role model to the person. The person picks the two from you. It shouldn't be that the person comes to you and then the person can't identify anything Islamic with you. I mean, we had a very horrible experience yesterday as a country, right? Where we were all rooted to go and cheer a Muslim brother and then we get a shocker. Right? Imagine if we had people who like really understood Islam and what it represented and these people are on these platforms. It would have been a winner for us and then any parents can be like, look, I want you to be like this individual. Okay? And then the second leg of the challenge is for our brothers who are studying Islamic studies, either in Saudi or in UAE or where they are. Right? I don't, I don't know how the institutions are structured, but then what I want to put is, is it possible that as you are studying Sharia, you can get to pick up a course in, say, mechanical engineering? As you are studying Sharia, you can get to pick up a course in, say, journalism. As you are studying um, Usul al-Quran and Usul al-Hadith, you get to pick up a course in, say, uh, um, engineering, lawyer. You, like, I mean, can you pick up an extra course? Such that when you come back into the country, your only, your, your only um, avenue to get job isn't just the Islamic institutions. Right, such that you become open to the world, such that every you, you can still walk up into institutions and then get the job to do. So that we have a lot of these people who excel such that look, it is very inspiring if I see my malam driving a G Wagon. Well, I'll be very happy. Because then I know that my malam is living the best of this world, and then the hereafter will also be good for him as well. Because one Allah has one not Allah has given, and look, they become the best person that we should envy. Rasulullah only permitted envy in two, in two instances. One who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the Quran, knowledge of the deen, and he's teaching it. And then the other one is the one who Allah has given money, and then the person is spending it in the way of Allah. Right? Now imagine if you are an individual who, have the, who has the two. You are, Allah has given you money. Like, Allah has, you are chilling, and you are, spend, you are using the money in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And then the second one is where you get to, um, like, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught you the deen, and so you are teaching people, and that becomes a jariah for you, right? So I think this is, what I, this, this is like the summary of the message I have across. It's not enough for you to have just one aspect of, of it, because the dunya is also as important as our akhirah, right? So in as much as you are pursuing Islamic studies, 
can you find a means of getting some some something that makes you successful in the dunya and then just as you are pursuing the dunya and you are getting all the certificate from it can you find a way where you are successful in the aspect of the akhirah just so that when you stand up as a role model to the young muslim he sees your identity as a muslim first then he sees your identity as what well, so you've achieved in terms of the dunya and then has our be like tawfiq wa salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh mashallah 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 Allah, this this subject is very deep is a very deep one Allah, mashallah i wish you could continue for us to because wallah we are benefiting mm -hmm. and wallah the point you made is a very is 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 very true you see most of the people who are inclined towards Islam okay Islamic so those who are on facebook Islamic i think Islamic Islamic he's Islamic speaking Islamic so Islamic um i'm just Islamic trying Islamic. to yeah it's fine you can go on and you see people too who are inclined towards the secular they are just focusing on the secular leaving the islamic so it's high yeah. time we try to you know, bring both so that we benefit in this dunya we benefit in the akhirah no. because Allah, today most of our scholars have been looked down upon because they don't have the secular part of education so no. to put it in that way no. No. so it's high time it's high time we just don't need scholars who come to the member or mount the member and talk we need role models as well. Yeah. So we can look up to. Now. Um, we, we can, you know, each other. I want to be like this shaykh. I want to be like this person because he has both. Yeah. You understand? When we come to the aspect of um, Arabic, Wallahi, he is very good. When we come to the aspect, and as you mentioned, Wallahi, Pantami is 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 he's one of my role models. Now. Now. Look at with, with all his his position in Nigeria, he's still doing tafsir. He's Naam. still doing da'wah. Naam. He's still calling people to Islam. Naam. And do you think when this guy speaks, no one will listen? People Definitely will listen. Definitely, they will listen, yeah. Because of the position yeah. he has. Yeah. Wallahi. And, and I have full conviction that if Umar was to exist, or Abu Bakr, or Uthman, or even the Prophet wasallam was to exist in our time today, they are going to do the courses like engineering, you know, uh, medicine, business, no doubt that Osman will do business now he and Abu Bakr because now you know they are expect during their time now so why are we leaving all this aspect to the kuffar thinking it's for them you know we we, we are free from we don't want the dunya you know subhanallah the dunya no no come on now when the prophet was making dua he said Rabbana atina he started with dunya now Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana now wa fil akhirati hasana so Naam. we wallah is a very good point so I wouldn't waste my time, inshallah. No. I think yeah, there is a question. A brother asked a question, and the question no. is, he said, can you take a non-Muslim as a role model? With okay. all his personality, can you take a non-Muslim as a role model? Okay, so um, I think that, that there is a question here from Instagram, and then the question is that, can a Muslim take a, a, a non-Muslim as a role model? Right? So I think the response I would have to um, that question is that, you see, a non-Muslim can be a role model, okay? But I, I, I would want to place a caveat that whatever it is that you see in a non-Muslim, Wallahi, if you, understand, if you take your time to read through the Surah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you are going to find that and what is better. That is what I know for sure. Whatever, whatever quality that you find in the non-Muslim that makes them worth following, you find it in Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But then, I mean, as, as, as for reality to really work out, you'd realize that sometimes we have to read from these people to find the dotted lines to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Like I mentioned, personally, one of the people that I see as role models is um, Steve Jobs. Right? Because I feel like he's really lived his life. He's, he's, he's left something very, very beneficial to the world today. When he's mentioned, everybody still see him to be this genius of a human being, right? And then that led me to go and then try and appreciate his, um, his, his, his mindset about the world, right? Then I get to realize that he was somebody who was an individual who was always reflecting on, the, on death. And then that, that actually was what was inspiring him to, to leave a legacy behind, right? So after I picked that, I tried to draw a dotted line from him to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where I quoted a hadith where Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, was telling us that we as individuals should always be cautious about death and then we should always be cautious about what we are leaving behind for tomorrow right 
such that we have a hadith where the Prophet was telling us that when a person dies, all his deeds cease except what he leaves behind the Sadaqah to Jariah. And look, if Steve Jobs was a Muslim, right, and then let's say he, he built Apple for the, for, with the intention of serving humanity, making life for hum, easy for humanity, and then he died as a Muslim. Imagine the reward that he'll be given in his grade. Well, like most, imagine the number of people who are using iPhones. You get it? But today, he doesn't get that benefit because essentially he's not Muslim. All right? So yes, you can look up to them, but for a role model, find a way to find a dotted line between them and Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because trust me, whichever individual you pick in the dunya today and whatever quality you see in them, well, lie, it is in Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's the best of answers I can give. Yes. Right. MashaAllah. Well, that's the best of answers. And it's true, and it's all more than we taking the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a role model. No. We're like, we have no other option. We have no other option. No. The reason why he was sent was for us to take him as a role model. No. Because the, the hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that says, Sallu kama ra'aytu mooni. Usalli. No. Pray just in your prayer. No. So you have to take him as a role model. No. About Hajj, he said, Khuz anni Take your Hajj from the Messenger. Which is no. like most of the time, Allah is asking us, Take from the Messenger, take from the Messenger, take from the Messenger. Okay. So, Allah, there is no doubt that He is the best of role model. No. We have to take the Messenger of Allah as a role model. No. Because most of the time, Allah is giving us direction take from Him, take from Him, learn from Him, take from Him. And Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah and the companion. Nam. There is also a hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For in no man yet is shall be cooked. Nam. Who will leave? Nam. So um, so I'm sorry for. Mhm. Now, now, you are saying something. So, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi was saying that yeah, you're going to see difference of opinion. People bringing in all sort of things. But the Messenger said, For alaykum bi sunnati. Upon you is my sunnah. Now, Upon you. And sunnah here is a way of life. Now, The way of life of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when he said, For alaykum bi sunnati. And he said, What sunnat khulafaw rashidin. And the khulafaw rashidin, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali. Naam. So their companions, the Sahabas are also role models. Naam. So if someone is thinking of being like Bill Gates, we, we have Uthman bin Affan. He was a Bill Gates at the same time he had the deed. Naam. And if, if you're a sister and you want to talk about being a nurse, we have Fatima to be to Muhammad. She was a nurse at the same time she had the deed. Okay. And we have, uh, we have Aisha radiallahu anha. She was a scholar in the deed. Naam. You know, we have a whole lot. If you want to go into military, we have Khalid bin Walid. He was Naam. a military at the same time. He knew, he knew the Quran. Naam. He knew the deed. Naam. So Allah, the deed has everything. We have everything. Allah, Naam. We have everything. Allah, alhamdulillah, la niya'ma to Islam. Naam. So, I don't know if you have a question at your end. That um, you I, think, that I, think the, I think the question that I saw in the Facebook comments also was around whether um, we can pick a non-Muslim as a role model. And then I think to the best of my ability, okay, I'm trying okay. to explain it. So I think, that has been answered. yeah, I think it's, it's a similar concern that individuals are having. But then we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept yeah. the little that you said and then reward us for it, inshallah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. Well, I like, thank you so much for your time. Welcome. And may Allah put it on our scale on the day of judgment. Amen, amen, amen. So, so I think we'll, we'll end the session here. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you very much. I so, um. Okay. Wa alaikum salam. So um, for the followers on Facebook, sorry I kept moving back and forth. Um, the session was originally led on Instagram and so I was just um, trying to make sure that there is some form of benefit here as well. So the session has ended inshallah. Myself also, I also be, I also like to take a leave. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.